Are you getting perhaps a little bit down from the past or perhaps a little bit anxious about the future? Well, today I'm going to talk about my top five lessons I've learned from the book, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. And if you stay until the end, I'm going to give you an additional bonus point. Now, I'm someone in my life who's always had a struggle to stay present, live in the present moment. Often, in a good way, I've, well, sort of in a good way, I've always been looking into the future and being like, oh, I can't wait until I do this. I can't wait until I do that. Now, I've also had times when I've looked at the past and then regretted things or felt sad about things or missed things. I've also had times where I've looked in the future and felt very, very anxious about things. And that's really impacted me on in, in certain points in my life. I've had my ups and downs, of course, on actually connecting to where I am currently and feeling good about myself. And the thing is, there's there's been like so many triggers in my life and uh, that have like we've all I believe we've all got triggers in some kind of ways, but triggers when that make me think of something in the past or make me think of something in the future. When I read the book, uh, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, which is about living in the present, it's about connecting to where you are now and being able to develop a more higher spiritual awareness of yourself and life in general. It really allowed me to start calming down and slowing down. And it's actually a book that I've revised or gone through again in the last year or so because I've needed it because I've been through some challenges whereby I've got very anxious, I've got very stressed. And actually coming back to the book has really helped me in some of the principles I learned when I was rereading them. And I thought I wanted to share them with you today. The best place to be is living in the present. Now, of course, we do need to dive into the past and future as well. And it's it's harder to not live there sometimes. In the past, we can pick up lessons, uh, you know, good or bad, you know, whether the situation was good or bad, we can we can pick up lessons. In the future, we need to plan. Obviously, we need to plan what's coming ahead um, because else we'll just be in reactive mode, right? You've got to be proactive and plan. The thing is that I learned from the book is plan for the future, but live in the present. And that's a really, really key fundamental. Now, ask yourself this. We're going to dive into some of the principles in a minute, because when you can live in the future, you're going to feel sorry, live in the present. You're going to feel a lot more calmer, a lot more connected, and a lot more confident of where you are now rather than some kind of expectation in the future. Ask yourself this. How is it helping you right now by constantly living in scenarios of what could come up? what's going to happen in the future or perhaps regretting everything in the past. And it's definitely a hundred percent easier said than done. Of course. Right. You've got to use the tools and processes and systems in place in order to really calm yourself down and be connected to where you are now, because I was guilty of it. And now and then I have to call myself out for it and become more connected to where I am now. So let's go into these lessons that I learned from the book, the power of now. The first one is observe yourself observing yourself is key to connecting with yourself and how you're feeling. And that's going to build a better relationship with yourself and also you improve your self-esteem when you can connect with yourself more. So if, for example, you know, I'm not saying you shouldn't have, and by the way, we're all going to always going to have positive and negative emotions. When you experience any kind of emotion, especially in a negative one, start observing yourself. I am feeling anxious. Why am I feeling anxious? I'm feeling anxious because I'm worried about the exam coming up. I'm worried about the workload. I've got the deadline. I'm worried about uh, the date that's coming up. Whatever it is, start observing yourself. And then when you start observing yourself, you can take that step back and that's actually going to allow you connect to connect with yourself more. The second one is ask yourself, what's going on inside of you? Like observing yourself is good, but then start it acknowledging what's going on inside of you. I am getting anxious because of this, this, and this, and that's making me remember this, or this is making me think of that. So that's just a step further to step one. Start actually understanding what's going on inside of you right now. The third one, the third principle uh, or key lesson I learned from it, and these are just things I draw out of the book, is don't look for a situation or circumstance to change 
try and be as happy as you can now. Look for how you can generate more joy now. Don't wait until you've earned that certain amount of money or you've got that ideal relationship or you've started that business or you've got your stats is hitting this much. Look for an opportunity to be happy now. And if you're perhaps in a harder place, it's going to be more challenging. That's why you want to bring in, well, that's why I'd always guide you to get a coach or someone who can really guide you out that place and help you a bit. But start thinking about what actually generates joy. Don't wait for a time to be happy. Be happy now. The fourth one, addiction is refusal to go through pain. Now, we sometimes think of addiction like um, alcohol, like drugs, like smoking. And it is those things, yeah? Addiction can be, there's a lot of addiction more than people realize. Addiction can be addicted to your phone. How many of us are addicted to our phone? Quite a lot of us, right? Uh, Addiction could be to work work can be an addiction as well and the thing is i've i've certainly noticed in myself i've had different addictions in my life i mean i was addicted to playing my playstation when i was a kid um i was addicted to daydreaming for quite a lot of my teenage years right when we have addiction and actually quite a lot of my 20s as well when we have addiction it's the refusal to go through pain We won't face pain. We won't face our negative emotions. And I noticed for me, when I got in my late 20s and early 30s, like I am now, I'm 32, actually quite a lot of things started surfacing and coming to the surface. And I've had to actually feel and experience the pain in my body, go into it. And when you can do that, you're going to allow yourself to experience better emotions. The problem is most of us don't want to experience those negative emotions, whether it's anxiety, whether it's depression, whether it's stress, whether it's frustration, whether it's anger. And when you can allow yourself to experience those emotions, you can experience more of the good ones. The problem is most of us numb it it out by like going out for drink. And I used to go out drinking most weekends, right, through my 20s. Uh, numb it out through that, through just keeping busy, through working, through maybe it is like extreme cases like drugs, uh, sex is an addiction. Um, Exercise can actually be an addiction. But when you can actually acknowledge that and then start actually feeling into the pain, then that's going to that's going to be uncomfortable at first and we don't we move away from discomfort as human beings when we can actually feel it though it's going to create a better quality of life in the long term when i've released some intense emotions whether that's from childhood from sort of a uh, the abandonment feelings i was feeling it allowed me to release that and then start feeling feeling more connected to myself and therefore develop my relationships with people as well the fifth one uh, is a key one conditioning with the external puts our happiness at risk so if you're constantly looking at the external world as i.e anything that happens outside of your own like mind uh for how you feel then it's always going to be at risk now yes there's always going to be some degree to which the external world is going to impact you so say you get that job promotion that's going to impact you and going to impact you positively if you make a certain amount of revenue each month that's going to impact you if you get into that relationship, that's going to make you feel better. And also the reverse, if you get fired, if you lose out on that deal, if you get, if someone splits up with you or rejects you, that's also going to impact you and how you feel. Yes, of course, I'm not saying that stuff wouldn't. However, when we start not doing any internal work, how like regulating our nervous system, and that's another conversation on the whole somatics uh, work that I do. Um, we, we don't do like our own psychology, work on our own psychology, um, then we're going to be even more at risk by external things. It doesn't mean external things outside of you aren't going to impact you, but the degree to which you can feel the good ones and then reduce the time you spent in the negativity from the bad ones is going to change if you do that internal work. Right. So don't just be reliant on external things for how you feel. An example of this is people who just rely on finding a relationship to feel good about themselves. The but the most thriving relationships I I've seen and I know people is is when they've actually worked on themselves first, made themselves happy, and then they've attracted someone else similar. Right. 
or like those pe- people I know who get a lot of money into their lives and they're living joyful lives. Now, yeah, you can be miserable and make a lot of money and have the skill. However, I've seen a lot of people really work on themselves, their money mindset, how they, their relationship with money when it wasn't good before. And then they started attracting a lot more money into that life. So you've got to do the eternal work it, because if you just leave it to the external world, then you put your happiness at risk. So those are my five takeaways that I want to share. Now, of course, I've got an additional uh, bonus one that I really want to share that I think is really, really key. Um, and it's this. Eckhart Tolle says this. If you can't surrender to the now, remove current challenges. Now, what the book talks about is about accepting where you are. And then obviously you've got plans, you've got goals, but accepting where you are now and living in it. It's not saying you should stay there. You can have these ambitions moving forward. Now, if you find it so hard to, as the word, surrender or accept where you are, um, if you find it so hard to do that now, then start looking at actually what you need to remove out of your life. Because if things are so intense that you can't accept where you are, start moving them out of your life. Maybe it's that conversation. It's going to be difficult, right? Sometimes that conversation you have to have with that someone, um, that maybe that, that circumstance you have to change. So if you can't surrender to now, remove current challenges. So that's what I've got for you today. My five takeaways from the power of now, allowing you to connect with yourself more and therefore not getting so caught, not saying you won't, but not getting so caught in the future all the time when maybe it's a bit anxious, a bit stressful, or in the past when you're feeling down, you're feeling regretful, you're feeling sad. It's about you will go in those places, but coming back into that present moment as much as possible so that's what i got for you today i appreciate you for being here you're improving other people's lives by being the best you and remember you are in control of your own self-esteem and confidence